back here at Pennsylvania Distilling, and I'm joined by the bar manager, Benjamin Balaban. And Benjamin, um, this is an opportunity for us to talk about what goes on behind the bar. We talked to Rich and Joe about what goes on in the distillery process and everything else. So I, I'd like to welcome you to Fermented Adventure, the podcast. So thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for hosting me. I'm happy so, to give some good feedback. One of the things I ask is, what do you want to be called? Is it, is it bartender, mixologist? How do people want to refer you to as? I usually like my first name. I mean, by textbook, what I do here, it's definitely mixology. Uh, I prefer alchemist because I like the freehand atmosphere of creating items. But, I mean, I do measure, so mixologist would be the proper term. But we're just doing something nice for the community here for a friendly face to give them what they actually want, a okay. good drink. All right, Benjamin the Alchemist. That's perfect. I, I like that. So how, do you, how, how did you arrive at alchemy? How did you arrive doing the bartending and the mixology? What, how, how was the journey for you? Well, you needed to get a job out of high school, and the best thing to do in college was, of course, to wait tables. And uh, the best thing about being in this industry is that you love people, but then you also really hate people. Okay. So I decided to go into a trade that was more <laughs> about they were already fed and happy, so they weren't hangry. So here they already ate food because then they arrived at the distillery after their dinner plans, and now they're just ready for a nice digestif or an after-dinner cocktail, or as some people refer to it as a nightcap. And if they do arrive hungry or hangry, as you said, there is a food truck outside. Oh, I send them right to the heathens. I'm like, go get some food, then come back and see me. <laughs> So, you know, we, we talked about a little bit about how you got here. What do you enjoy most about bartending? Uh, you know, what do you enjoy most about being behind the bar? I enjoy my regulars. Those who actually come back that I made a positive impact on for the experience that they had here and they want that to continue with the relationship is actually one of the most rewarding parts of this job. Um, other than that, the creative outlet of creating artisan style cocktails that I get to take my time making instead of just putting them out there as fast as possible so you can get a drink in your hand. So I like the atmosphere of taking my time, being with the guests, as well as doing everything from scratch on an organic basis to do everything myself. So what is your favorite spear? Do you have a favorite spear to work with or something you gravitate towards? Here, I love working with the whiskey most. My personal one is the one that we do not make, which is tequila. Okay. Because a classic margarita with agave syrup, lime juice, and tequila is just my favorite one to go with. But I can alternate that one with just a nice, simple Hemingway-style daiquiri with just rum, simple syrup, and lime juice. Now, one of your, and I've heard you say that one of your spirits, some people have said it tastes like a tequila. There has been that one coming out of it for the rum the itself. Rum. Um, I think it really just comes down to a classic case of like coriander and um, cilantro. Based on your genetics, you either taste soap or you taste the actual flavor of the herb. Right. So I think these people, they can taste rum, but then other people, they taste tequila from just, I guess, it's just how their palate is. So is that your favorite drink to make or do you have a favorite drink that you like to make here? Ooh, Old City Fashion is one of my favorite ones to go with because I've heard many horror stories on people destroying an old fashion or many positive stories about people enjoying an old fashion. So that's like the best one to really be introduced with here on a whiskey basis. Otherwise... As much fun as I do like to make the Adriatic, I think it's more fun covering my hands over the entire cocktail to see the reaction of my guests, but definitely the Old City Fashion is my winning of the gold medal. So as you start to create the cocktails, because I understand here at Pennsylvania Distilling, you change your menu seasonally, yes? Correct. Okay, so what are some of your inspirations for the cocktails you make? Where do you go to to get inspiration? Uh, travels overseas, um, wherever I can accept a little bit more culture and pick it up when I'm going somewhere, keeping an open eye and an open ear to what I'm enjoying when I'm out in restaurants or bars. Um, another one would uh, simply be for my peers. If they have something that they really, really like to incorporate, I will do a little research in R&D. Or if they bring me something, I'll just kind of honor it from them to do so. Um, the one reason uh, or one example I can use in that is when I was traveling through Croatia, um, my key cocktail, the Adriatic, is based off of one of their gin and tonics. Because everywhere we went on a uh, restaurant basis, my father would order a gin and tonic, and every single time it was with Hendrix Gin. They had a little slice of cucumber in the glass, and they did au pois style ice, which is just simply peppercorn, to give it an extra spiciness in the background of the flavor of cocktail. So basically what you rely on is some of your travels, your experiences, that you can now use and create things behind the bar. Yeah, just keep so, it going from there. So what are some of the other um, inspirations that you've, that you've now brought out of some of your travels? What are some of the other cocktails that you've brought? You mentioned the Adriatic, are there any others? Mm, there's a spicy one, especially the use of cayenne, ghost peppers, and Carolina Reapers. I had a local gentleman who comes in here quite often, grows his own peppers at home, and he asked me if I wanted to incorporate any of them. And a lot of people these days, especially for the spring and summer times, likes that extra release of endorphins to get them nice up and going. Um, 
other than that, fruits uh, from where I grew up with. Since I am from Florida, we have a little bit hotter of a tropical climate. So a lot of the items that I'm used to growing up with are not normal up here in Pennsylvania. They have to be shipped here. So we'll be seeing a lot of my Floridian influence coming around in the summer menu. The summer menu, which is exciting. And, and, and what really comes out is you're a craft distillery and you're making unique products. And the thing that you get to do is now you get to make unique craft cocktails. So it carries really the total experience you're going to have that you're just going to get something a lot more of an experience than, you know, what you'd find at, you know, another bar. Correct. And that's what you really bring. No, you get the full show, the make of it. You get to see the curtains go up, the band begin, and then you get to see the conductor come out and tap his little easel and send the whole show on the road. So as a, an alchemist, Benjamin, any good stories from the behind, the bar, behind the bar you want to share? Any memorable stories? Oh, there was one time in the Garlic Poet in Central Pennsylvania where I almost lost my job, which is my favorite story ever. <laughs> I was sitting behind the bar. I was finished serving because I was just waiting tables at the time. My friend Daniel Frizzell, which is called the Bitter Dan. Little shout out to Daniel Frizzell. He taught me everything I knew behind the bar when my bitters and cocktails come together. But Dan was uh, helping some guests at the end of the bar, and I was just doing some of his dishes. Uh, a lady came in with a group of her guests, and the entire cove of the bar was just seated with guests. And so I was just doing some of his dishes to help him catch up, and the lady in front of me was a little inebriated, and she just looks over at me and goes, Excuse me, are you the bartender? And I just picked my head up real quick, dropped my hands, and I was like, No, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. And I bow my head down and just walk away. A little bit more information after my manager talked to her for about a half hour later and I was banned from ever coming back on the bar for that evening, we found out that she just buried her husband and was just leaving the okay. funeral service. So okay. she was in a really bad mood. Meanwhile, everybody else around the bar thought it was absolutely hysterical because everybody knew that I was just a server helping him wash dishes and she just had no idea what was going on. But we didn't know this information just yet and yeah. I felt it really comes out of context, don't you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But then afterwards, everybody was hysterically laughing because now I'm known as the Ghost of Christmas Past yeah. around the bar area. But that was be like the one day, not associated with drinks that I've made for a guest. But um, So when people come into um, Pennsylvania Distilling, see if the Ghost of Christmas Past is behind the bar. Benjamin, very, very much the alchemist so. making drinks. Please let me know if you come from a funeral <laughs> beforehand so I know exactly what context to greet you in. So I call this, this is kind of the rapid fire round. I call it the speed well. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I just want you to come up with the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Okay. okay. Shaken or stirred? Shaken. Neat or on the rocks? Both. But you have to pick one. Neat. <laughs> okay. Uh, best bar-related or alcohol-related alcohol song? Alcohol by Bare Naked Ladies. Okay. What was the first alcohol that you ever tried? Oh, a yinling lager. Okay. What age? Oh, my God. I was seven years old. Okay, seven years old. And uh, so Yingling Lager is seven years old, and from there you were hooked? Yeah, but then I went to Sake and Shambord with my mom, and then I'm pretty sure the Croatians had me drinking Slivovitz, which is Croatian plum brandy. Slivovitz. Now I can stomach it. Beforehand, I was just like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and that was at eight. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Okay, living or dead, who would you like to make a cocktail for? Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway. And uh, basically, is there anything right now before we go to the bar and see you make some cocktails that you kind of wanted to talk about or let us know about your experience? No, the best way to really understand the experience is to watch it happen. Uh, anytime a guest asks me what a certain cocktail tastes like or a certain herb will, uh, will taste like in the cocktail, they're like, what is cardamom? And my greatest response I always respond with is the only man way to explain water to a blind man is to simply push him in. So I'll tell them to hold out their hand if they want to try it bitter, and I'll just put a squirt right out of the dropper right on their hand so they can actually taste it and get the profile. Because the only way to truly grasp understanding is to experience. So we're going to go to the bar, you're going to make a couple cocktails, and we're going to get that experience. We're going to just jump right in. Oh, about it. About yeah. it. Let's do it. Yeah. At this point in time, we are going to make two of our staple cocktails from our specialty cocktail menu. The first is going to be the Old City Fashion.
At this point in time, we are going to do our other staple cocktail, the November Nights. Benjamin, thank you so much for sharing these delicious cocktails with us. The best thing people can do is come on out to Pennsylvania Distilling in Malvern, try one of your cocktails, visit Benjamin the Amazing Alchemist, and I can't wait to try this cocktail. Benjamin, thank you. Rich, thank you very much. Bill. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, that's incredible. Oh, I forgot how smooth this was. <laughs> <laughs>